Hey, okay, we've we've started. It's five seconds in. All right. All right. This is Mr. Numbers, and I will be your inane today. Your what? You're inane. I am the inane. The inane? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Becca, and I'm probably going to be very absent-minded through this. No apologies in advance. I regret nothing. Anyone else want to introduce themselves? Hello. I am Leo. Awkwardly here with a friend of mine right now, but I'm still going to play. <laughs> I don't. Uh, can someone check to see if the stream's actually catching this on mic or anything? Yeah. You know, someone check the mute the call, and then don't. check the stream. Just send me the link. I'll do it myself. It's yeah. Kind of yeah. Send the link. All right. Um, the link should be on Facebook, but I'll link the group. And oh, and I Facebook. forgot. I'll link the group, and I should probably link you guys Roll20. I should do that. So, this is Boosh. I've been a little bit absent, mostly due to, um, you know, moving into a new apartment, getting things straightened away with lightning. No, getting things straightened away with school. And uh, hopefully lightning won't disturb this entire uh, stream. And Lena was on vacation. And then Final Fantasy XIII was the most terrible game ever. Yes. Final Fantasy XIII was terrible because I never played it. So unappealing to me. With your waifu bullshit. But uh, today... We're missing someone. A very important person. By the name of Tomas. Thomas. Tom will not be here this session. And has said to go on without him. But he will be remembered in the hearts of mine and minds of people, like minded people out there believe in justice and in America and in the truth. Hey, he had better shit to do, so he, you know, he, he let, he, he's not going to be able to make it tonight. So instead, he's going to be on autopilot. By autopilot, I mean he's an NPC. He's an NPC that, you know, if you want to eject him in the space, I'm going to have to delightfully refuse. Now, you say delightfully, but I get the impression that he will not be the one in the pod. I'm sorry, repeat? You say delightfully, but I get the distinct impression that it's it will happen. It's just that won't, he won't be the one in the pod. Uh, well, you know, Wade will NPC for you. Um, ah, shit. Now I have to find, uh, his file. So, uh, oh, in other news. Quest Nut stuff. Uh, production has been slow because of moving. And, uh... Script one and two are done, but I have just started on script number three. And I'll let you know how that turns out. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Um, well, how did it turn out? Script one and two? Yeah. Script, well, script one I like. There's a few things I'm thinking about, you know, editing out. I still need to do all my attack sounds for Farah. Yeah. I get to sound like Link. <laughs> yep. Um. So. Uh, Austin will be here 
He's having a bit of, uh, you know, laptop problems. As in he sucks and he and he's late. He sucks. Roll 20 changed. It oh, did, yeah, it did. I like the change. I'm okay with it. I didn't like the change at first because it prevented me from logging in. And anything that completely breaks the website is something that's, that is not supposed to be, you know, good. I'm going to add this to my cart. Danny. Yeah? I decided to go and buy Katamari Damasi. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I got my paycheck the other day, and I'm like, wow, this is a lot more than I expected. So I'm like, what am I going to, what am I going to splurge on? And I decided on instead of a haircut, let's get Katamari Damasi. It's half the price. Man. That's awesome. What's I second? wish, I wish I had disposable income. <laughs> yeah. You just have us. I really don't have disposable income. If this is just, <laughs> dear Lord, do I keep? I, I don't know my password. What the hell? You can't get in the roll twenty. No, it's on Amazon. Oh. So, uh, session. Session. We should probably recap what happened last time. By the way, can anyone hear me on the stream? Yeah, I mean, I can hear you right now. I mean, uh, on stream. Anybody on stream right now? I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering if the stream audio is okay. That way I know. Let me check. I'm going to mute myself for a second. All right. La, 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 la. Okay, good. All right. Recap last time on Quest Not. You guys went into a the tomb of uh oh God, what did we call it? Was it Fushu or Mushu? It was the Manser, wasn't it? It was a temple dedicated to the Manser, basically. Carved into the head of a giant, you know, space, well, giant. And inside of that head were, you know, booby traps, tentacle monsters, and, you know, weird eardrum faces, and then a head inside of a head, which had a brain. And that brain had tentacles, and that brain attacked you. It also had, uh, Russ's quote-unquote dad, Leon Blade. Who was, you know, very, you know, not really happy to see Russ. In fact, you kind of realize that he was a terrible father. Ooh. And, and he'll never respect you, Russ. Never, ever. No matter how hard you try. I gave him quite the bitching at. Yep. And, uh, Belonke, uh, you know party down with some people who were mourning <laughs> and uh, was promptly kicked out and in a fit of rage he peed in their uh, engine in their fuel lodge in the you know in the icy environment of space so you know he did that and uh, you know he suffered some damage for it, but he's going to be okay. And, uh, you guys made your, you guys, uh, meanwhile with, Jesus Christ, that lightning. Anywho, you beat up the brain monster and received your first artifact. Yay! Which we are probably going to sell. That you are probably going to sell. And there are some hidden abilities of the artifact that you have yet to discover. But I'm afraid of keeping it on for too long. Because it kind of gives you a headache. Mm -hmm. Literally. World's worst hangover. Yep. It was, the Bindi was known as the Bindi of Akali Ubara. Ubora. I meant bleh. It gave you a huge mental boost 
with the sacrifice of, you know, a huge migraine afterwards. So, uh, why is Skype acting up on me? It's refusing to load. Can you guys hear me? Alright, cuz I'm getting this stupid loading, 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 and I can't interact with Skype at all, so. Who knows? Anywho, uh. All of your characters should be at full health now. Hooray! So, oh yeah, I wasn't really done recapping. So, you escape with the Bindi, with, you know, Leon not noticing. And you yeah, because pretend because they uh, because Farrah just kept her mouth shut and shoved it in her cleavage. And uh, and actually, you wouldn't have really been able to do that. You were wearing an exosuit. She somehow managed. I mean, I she guess. On the whole damn thing, so let's just get it on things. She broke the laws of physics. <laughs> She managed to hide it on her person because it's so goddamn... I mean, I guess you could have put it un in your underboob. <laughs> underboob. <laughs> in the underboob. The sweaty, terrifying underboob. <sighs> Anywho. So, you hid the bindi and managed to make it to your ship before uh, Leon Blade can make it back to his... Blanque blows the fuck out of his ship and makes his escape with you guys. And you are now on your way to meet your benefactor. And, uh, I believe I've recapped everything. Did I miss anything? Yeah. Why are you a dork? God damn it, numbers. I just <laughs> want to be cool. <laughs> it was bad. I just asked why. I was born this way. I have a mental condition. My order is placed. I get Katamari Damasi by Saturday. Yay. You know what's also great? Restaurants. Yep. Yeah, Austin can't get in the call. So... What I'm going to do... Restart it? I really can't. I, I'm going to have to quit Skype. And uh, I'm going to start another call. And hopefully fill in this period of dead air with my sweet, sultry tones. Oh, dear. Bye. All right. Well, it's just you and me now. Stream. We're just in this together. Man, I really hate those guys. I don't really know why I play with them. They're such jerks. They always try to ruin my campaign. I made this homebrew system just for them, and all they do is complain about it. They're such assholes. I hate this. Ugh. God. One day, I'm just going to replace all of them with new players. It's going to be so much better. Ugh. Hopefully, you know. Uh, well, I'm back on Skype. I guess I should let them back in. Alright, here I go! Restarting the call. Hi, hey, Austin. Austin? Con, the network's not working. Oh. And Skype is clearly not working for everyone. Well, I mean. I think even Lena's like, I can't get a call. Okay, this is weird. I'm going to restart the call one last time. Alright. Alright, restarting. I should inform them. And god damn it, Skype. Uh, wait. Alright, let's do this. These fucking amateurs with their amateur technology.
one day. I'm going to be fucking fantastic, let me tell you. Hey, Lena. It's Austin, Lena, and Becca. My favorite people. Hey. Lena, are you there? Mm-hmm. Numbers is here. Connor. What? Are you being a crying piss baby? It's okay to be a crying piss baby. Hear me, Connor. Can you guys hear me? Mm-hmm. You're a crying piss baby. Danny, what's the matter with you? Danny, no. Join us, Danny. Join us! Anyway, that aside... Well, Austin, I recapped, uh, last time. Hopefully Danny will join us. And I believe... How long have I spent on this stream? 16 minutes and we haven't even started. So how about we do that? I guess so. So... You have a bindi of ultimate power. Where are you going to store it? On the ship? Yeah. I feel like we should just keep it on somebody. Who wants to carry it, then? Not Russ. It is not going to Blanque. Ooh, okay. Something's up with Austin and Danny. Austin dropped and Danny dropped. I didn't do it. On purpose. I'm gonna have to restart the... Oh, Danny's here. Danny? It's funny. As soon as we get you back, Austin drops. It's hilarious. Quote, unquote, funny. Quote, unquote, I want to rip my brains out and throw them at the wall. So, I'm going to let you guys RP since you have some downtime right now. I'm trying to fix things. Okay. So, uh, Lena's present, right? Uh, uh, let's see. Danny is screaming yeah. in chat. We cannot hear Danny, but we can see him in the normal chat. I cannot hear you, Danny. Austin's back. Is it working? Yep, it's working, okay. I guess. Alright. Alright, so... Oh. Danny has to do nice. a thing right now. All right, so he can go in the quiet corner with a uh, <laughs> key. <laughs> All right, so I'm giving you some time to RP around, you know. Can you, give it you can find it yourself. For the ownership of the Bindi. <laughs> Wait, what? Who Too much the responsibility. Bindi? Uh, Russ is going to publicly recommend, uh, Marina for ownership of the Bindi. Um. I've completely forgotten what the Bindi is supposed to do, but Russ that's wants a lot it of responsibility. In... So Russ it's wants it? Bindi. Russ wants Marina to have it because he sees her as the most responsible, aside from maybe Farrah. Because... As... Right now, it's technically in Farrah's possession because she's the one who picked it up. Uh, uh, by the way, Danny, if you are listening, I will, uh, you know, listen. I will answer your question. And I don't even. Yeah, I am. I am listening. I don't really know what you are asking. He has a thing to do right now, which is why he's not talking, and he's not okay. in the chat anymore. Okay. Alright. Nothing on live stream? 
All right. But he also said to check your private I am, I think. So yeah, you didn't don't really. Say that one out loud. Yeah. Um. All right. Anywho, let's start this session. So, you, Russ, and Marina are. Yeah, Russ is nominating Marina to have the bindi. Yes. Yes. Marina. Sarah's okay with that because Marina is probably the only one she would trust with such ultimate power. Other than herself. Connor, I'm sorry. We need to stop this game. Someone is making Waluigi's... Like, someone's posting Waluigi's face on the princesses and girl... On, on Rosalina and Palutena's bodies. You interrupted this fucking stream for this bullshit. You would want to see it. Not right now, Austin. Okay. Um. So. Anywho, Marina, do you want the bindi? Only because nobody else wants it. Fair is okay with keeping it or handing it over, so. You're gonna need to give me the notes on it because I have no idea what that thing does. No, it's like an experiment. You can just put it on and find out. Oh my god. <laughs> It'll be fun. <laughs> or Marie. They can hide away in the book room and use lore on it repeatedly. I mean, you can if you want to. Lore, 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 lore. <laughs> Alright, roll, roll your lore ability. You nat one. Yeah. Oh, oh, ooh, 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 that means you get to go confused. Oh boy, oh boy. I have been waiting for this. Oh, she is. Okay. I was gonna say, she just came across nothing but Blanquist romance novels. No, 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 no. What romance novels? Who told you? <laughs> Now, that, only, that depends on, the, the definition of romance novels depends on whether you considering consider fucking in the ass to be romantic or not. <laughs> Let's um, just say Farrah's already found a few of these She's reading books. Galactic Bestseller, The Sultry Cocktail Waitress of z Warps 12. Anyway, she's confused, so now what? Uh, give me a second. Lena, roll me a d20. Just a flat d20 for me, please. 17. Okay, let's see. Confusion. Alright. Here's the good news. You can try your lore again, but this time with a minus five penalty. Remember, you only have a limited time that times a day equal to your intelligence so that you can use your lore spell. So, you know. You can try your lore again. Just to send something to the chat. You can try to find out more about this, but you have to extend another use of your lore at a minus five. Wait, come on, we're still at level three, right? Yeah, for right now, yeah, I'm not wanting to go through the drama of leveling you all up right now. Though I do believe okay. that last we're level time. Four. Oh. Then, uh, yeah, upgrade your character if you want while everyone's talking. Um. Does it come with a list of what I can upgrade, or no? 
Um, your new skill caps are, you know, an additional five, so you can upgrade them all to ten if you, one thing to ten if you want to. But for the most part, you got ten new skill points and ten as a new, uh, cap on all your other shit. Alright, Lena, are you gonna roll your lore again or no? What happens if I put it on and then use lore? Um, Actually, not, not even what happens. That's what Marina does. Tell me what to do. All right. You don't even need to roll anymore. Which is one of the wonderful abilities <laughs> of, uh, you just know what the Bindi is. Mm. Well, it's one of actually the wonderful abilities. I'm gonna now tell you about the, uh, Bindi of Akali Uboro. First off, uh... I'm going to have to roll that 3d6, or 3d6, give me a second, 7, so you put it on, your eyes glow, they're even, by the way, unofficial lore, or official lore, Marina's eyes are absolutely beautiful. <laughs> uh, right, quick. Seven is damage. Yep, seven as your non-lethal damage. Real quick, Con, okay. do we get also another ability score point? Yes, you do. All right. With your cap being six. All right. You actually had two. Two. Yeah. All right. Six stacks. I'm useful. Yay! Wonderful. Anywho, Marina, the Bindi of. Ubora, basically, you know, rule rules wise for the game. You know that this gives you a plus ten to all your mental stats. It oh also goodness. it also gives you a uh, plus ten on your will, so you know no one's going to be attacking your mind anytime soon. You also are crowded with the uh, the thoughts of everyone with, within 30 feet of you. So, really, attacking her mind would be a lot like tossing a pebble into a quarry. Yeah. Also, you can mind control a number of targets equal to your charisma. But, for the most part, uh, the mind... Re you uh, for roleplay reasons, what is everyone, uh, Blanque, Russ, and Farah, what are you thinking of at the moment? While watching her put it on, or? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's already, right. Farah's already done it, because we, we had Farah do it already, so she's probably sitting there going, and now we just wait for her to take it off. Russ? Russ is, uh, right enraptured by the wonder of the situation and he's also got a heap of unresolved daddy issues. <laughs> Just floating on the surface. Belanke, what are you thinking of? Um, he's just distracted by Marina's eyes like these, just like diamond, little diamonds. <laughs> How close are you leaning in to be able to see that past the hair? Um, they are glowing, so your hair's just sort of whooshing. Oh, you're kind of doing magic. like a sort of L'Oreal commercial right now. Yeah, it's like there's some imaginary wind, right? There's this this <laughs> magical wind blowing your hair it's around. Girl, right now, isn't it? It's just her bangs too, because Marina shaved <laughs> everything but her they bangs. Have those sparkles on off the floor. Gonna get everywhere. <laughs> it's funny because it's just these wispy bangs, so it's just sort of really gross looking now thinking about it. Oh god, it's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> this is <just> wispy <laughs> hair just going everywhere like ee ee. Well, but your eyes are actually glowing, which is more so than usual. <laughs> more so than usual, apparently. <laughs> yes. So Learning about the Bindi's abilities, do you want to... Are you going to look any further, or are you going to take the Bindi off? 
Uh, Marina takes the bindi off and says, gosh, it hurts a little. I mean, seven damage isn't nothing to laugh at, I'm just saying. <laughs> Anywho. See, I'm only going to add it on for like six seconds. Yeah, that's true. It was okay. almost a, a hit point a so, second. Uh, question uh, out of character. What happens with, when somebody with negative charisma wears the bindi and tries to mind control someone? Um, well, because you have a plus 10 to your charisma, uh, what's your charisma mod? Minus two. You would only be able to do up to eight people. Okay. That was, that was an opportunity for some great shenanigans. Slap it onto someone with low charisma and suddenly they can't. Do anything, but actually, wait, wait. No, you're right. You're right. You actually can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just remembered. I forgot to write that down in the rules, and I remember thinking to myself, oh, wait, what do I want with this? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's your actual charisma modifier. Also, it has the wonderful ability of any, uh, you know, Knowledge, sensory, or social skills role, you just automatically succeed. Heh. <laughs> There's no oh. failing. You can't Con, fail. Con, the new, uh, Star Fox Zero? Okay, goddammit, Austin, we're in the middle of something. You can tell me after the stream. Well, they look really good. I know we it probably looks... We until after the stream! <laughs> we're doing a thing. Suddenly, Fox McCloud shows up and, like, look at my cool character model. We only have three and a half hours until we lose Lena. Let's move. Move, move, okay. move. Okay. I have, like, ADD like a mofo. No, don't mind me, crazy old Austin. Um, you hear from your, uh, con your, uh, your terminal up here. Oh, oh shit. Uh, uh, like, you got space mail. Alright, let me see what it is. Um. You get a call. Ring, 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 ring. Phone call, phone call. Ring, 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 ring. Phone Wait, call. Who, who replaced the normal messaging system and put a fucking phone here? <laughs> Also, a rope of parrot phone, real guys. <laughs> ring, uh, ring, 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 phone call, phone call. Are you gonna pick it up? up. I'm gonna. Farrah's gonna go ahead and answer it while Blanque is complaining. Apparently. Do you go with him? Yeah. I'll go with her, or whatnot, and I have already answered the phone. I don't want to talk to anyone. <laughs> I don't want to talk to anyone. Farrah, you do it. Okay. Um. Sort of the anonymous sort of, uh, you know, sort of a silhouette, anonymous sort of silhouette shows up with sort of a voice modulator on, so you can't really tell who it is. Okay. Speaks. Uh, change of plans. We might need to uh, relocate our uh, rendezvous point for the uh, artifact. Okay, Wait. is there a reason why? Unicorn. Fucking unicorns. In fact, there we've actually tried to evacuate the solar system as fast as we could, but, you know, you know, it's it's become a problem. Sir, they broke through! Very, very confused, going, Wait, what? Have you not heard of unicorns, dear? Uh, I lived almost my entire life on one planet until my fiancé told me to sign up for Questmas. Well, okay. If you love your fiancé so much, why won't you marry him? I'm doing this job so we can actually afford the wedding, thank you. Wait, I thought you were doing... You are never mind. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, they have unicorns have the miraculous ability to not only exist in the harsh conditions of space, but they also have a knack for teleporting things. People, planets, 
internal organs. You get the idea. Okay. I mean, I'd really hate to reschedule because it might be a month and I have so many other appointments. You know what? I might actually add a little bonus if you, uh, you know, could uh, get rid of it. Get rid of the unicorn. <laughs> Russ is going to pipe up. Uh, how exactly is that normally done? Well, usually a fleet of ships go try to go at it at the same time. And usually the unicorn can't really, you know, compre comprehend who's who and tries to teleport, you know, as many as it can. But usually there's one ship that uh, has gets one sh right shot in, and they usually take it out pretty easy. So hold on, Russ says. Uh, so yeah, this thing is, is normally taken on by whole armadas, and you want us to go after it alone. I mean, it'd be really helpful for the galaxy, you know? These things are menaces. I understand. Um... He turns back to the Balanque. Do we have any sort of cloaking devices? We can fight them in our space suits and hope we live. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Beautiful. Russ, what are, what are you doing, Russ? Don't you do anything. <laughs> I swear to God. I will poop you on the nose. <laughs> I don't think I actually have a nose. It's always been kind of an odd question. You do. You do. I slap him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get, bitch. <laughs> Russ looks angry. So You're not a very go good after... captain. So are we going to go after the unicorn or not? <laughs> No, I don't want to fuck that thing. Well, fuck with it. <laughs> you get the idea. Have you, ever heard of a, have you ever heard of a gentleman named Troy? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? A gentleman named Freud. You had a Freudian slip, Austin. <laughs> this, is, no, this is in character. Have you ever heard of a gentleman named Freud? His name is Freud. Freud? <laughs> Freud. <laughs> but Blanca apparently is now going to say what, just like Austin did. Sarah will pat his head. Like, oh, race, nothing. You mean those race of robots that kind of have a thing like Tourette's? No, no. Pass his head. Never mind. Is Russ there? Russ is here. Alright, does Russ get the joke? Uh, <laughs> honestly, I, I didn't hear it all that well. Roll general knowledge. Because you read so much, you might know. You should know about. Uh, I didn't hear it, like me personally. Oh, oh, oh! It was a reference to S Sigmund Freud, or it should be Sprigman Sproyd. <laughs> yeah, Russ would be familiar with that. He's just... Roll general knowledge. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. because of the slip up of just like I don't want to fuck a unicorn. I mean, I don't want to fuck with a unicorn. Russ. <laughs> And so Ferris You're heard not heard of the gentleman named All Freud. right. As anyone else would give a sensible chuckle. <laughs> you are on the floor laughing. You are trying to hold it in. <laughs> it is not working. <laughs> you You're like gasping for breath like this is the funniest thing you have ever heard in your entire life. And this is perfect because of the way he grew up. At first, I was just going to say he gave you a sensible chuckle. <laughs> nope. You, might, you guys are actually afraid that he might start, like, hitting the ground, which might cause some interior damage to your hull. Oh, shit, 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 shit. <laughs> Put down the towel. It'll just explode it. I don't think that's how it works, Austin. No, no. <laughs> the fuck? How do I stop him? He, um, um, 
Wait, Ro- I'll make him depressed. Dead puppies. <laughs> Ross immediately looks sad. <laughs> Why would you do that? For good, good reasons. All right. So, so are you going to, you know, I don't really know what's going on in the background. I hear a lot of laughing. Are you going to take care of the unicorn? Farron eh, looks over at laughing Russ and looks at Blanca, look, probably looking upset and just, um, uh, we'll try. Okay. No promises. You'll, you can expect a good, uh, a million and a half bonus to your already, you know, $10 million, uh, 10 million buck reward. And just, Farron just going, okay. We will try, and we'll let you know if we succeed. I make no promises on our success. Fantastic. (laughs) Hope you guys make it. Oh, and don't lose the bindi. Just make sure you you don't lose that. Understood. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. (laughs) Hangs up. Russ uh, is back to being serious again. So, really, do we have any way of concealing our ship? There's um, any... We have a clo- we don't have a cloaking device. I have lasers. Um, you then receive an email on the last sightings of the unicorn, sort of like a public, you know, service announcement. It's like a tornado warning. Uh, God, I hate these. But monsters. instead, we're heading towards the tornado. It's last been seen near a uh, inside of a quite a large asteroid belt. Upgrading HP. Oh yeah, and Lena, I should give you more HP. Forty. You're at thirty-three HP, Lena. <laughs> Thera should be at uh, fifty-two. Oh, okay. And Russ. Um. Where are you at? I have myself at 56 at the moment. Okay. That would probably... Yeah, that's correct. Okay, anywho. So. It's last been located in an asteroid field. Just sort of prancing along. So. And it's actually relatively nearby. It should actually only take you an hour to get to that asteroid field. Jeez. Um. Okay. So, do you head that way, or do you abandon this quest? Oh, wait. Oh, wait, are we dropping off the bendy, or...? You have to get rid of the unicorn first. We, t- we told them no promises, so... We can say we tried, but... It wasn't a success. It gives us an extra <laughs> million and a half bucks, though. I asked the computer something. Computer, what is our successes of fighting off a unicorn? Um, you type this into like a Google search engine thing. <laughs> and yeah, like fucking Siri or something. You go to Spa Who Answers. And the only replies are laughter. Uh. Like what mul- is this? What is this? Three, three. What is this? Why did someone make butt a butt with like lettuce? Who does this? <laughs> oh, oh. What is this weird? And he just points at like someone drew like a uh, text penis. <laughs> God. <laughs> Anywho, you actually. How about get- we ask someone competent, like an actual quest knot? Do you want to call your husband? Or yeah, let's what? call the techie. I mean your husband, though. I mean fiancé. <laughs> fiancé. Yes. Okay. Go ahead and call him up. Uh, we're going to die. He's not busy. One is as bad as they say. Hello? Hey, Danny. All right, I had a feeling. I, the reason why you guys couldn't hear me before was because that my headsets were in. Ah. Uh. Uh. 
And I guess that countered the microphone for some reason. All right. Oh, you know what? I think those have a mic of their own. Oh. One sec, then. All right. Yeah, so we're calling up Nicola. All right. So, calling Nicola. Uh, ring, 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 ring. Phone call, phone call. Uh, Nicola picks up. God, I need to change that voice, that, that ringtone. Hey, babe, what's up? Hey, hon, we just got, um, a thing that we said we promised to try, so I need to make sure that there's a chance of us even succeeding. Oh, wait, I should do the Nicola voice, shouldn't I? You don't have to. I don't have to. Oh, well, uh, let me see. Uh, what, wait, so what do you need help with exactly? What's the chances of a novice group of quest nodders against a unicorn? <laughs> it doesn't sound like a Nicola reaction. Oh, babe, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. Why would you tell that really... F oh, man, that's, that's like some entry-level joke right there. And she's just sitting there, kind of just like... Biting her lip, just, uh, I was being serious. Oh, fucking God, you're serious. <laughs> Again, that doesn't really seem like a Nicola response, but go ahead. Uh, you're serious, aren't you? Well, the person that we, that hired us to do the whole artifact search is giving us an extra million and a half if we successfully get rid of the unicorn. Oh, you, you deserve so much more for doing that. <laughs> well, I did, we made no promises that we would succeed. Yeah, but you didn't make any promises for you to all die. <laughs> well, we could say we tried. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Why do you have to stress me like this? Ugh. Okay. Okay. All right. I've never done this before, but I've heard stories. Okay. All right. Anything that can help, hon. All right. You're one ship, right? Yes. All right. Um, can you tell me anything about the environment you're going to be finding this thing in? That's a self-destruct button. No, not not your ship. Don't don't press that. Ice. What are you wearing? <laughs> Blanque. With just... all due respect, Blanque, shut up. No. <laughs> <laughs> she looks Actually, back and I should... As far as I know, this is a modified cargo ship. No, I'm talking read... about where are you finding the unicorn? The where... last report we had was an asteroid belt. Okay, you might have a chance. Really? I mean, here's the deal. This, they're, they're usually pretty good at spotting stuff. At least, you know, within a certain range. But if you can hide in the asteroid field well enough, then, uh, you know, you might actually stand a chance. Though, if I were you, I'd all put on your exosuits inside your ship. It's just fair, just like, that is sound advice. So essentially we need to hide behind asteroids and shoot them. I also try uh, deep breathing exercises because it's been known to teleport lungs outside of the person's chest. Right. Wait, wouldn't it get inside <laughs> our lungs if we deep breathed? I mean, granted, it doesn't help. I'm just saying holding your breath, you know, might make it better. Who really knows? <laughs> Baby, why are you even doing this? Money. Because <laughs> I want a nice wedding and I want a nice retirement. Uh. Yeah, why can't you make a woman happy? Uh, uh. And just fair, this was all my idea and he doesn't get a say. I'm going to say it was my idea. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. Uh, Danny, you were about to say something? I was about to say several things, but they're all irrelevant now. 
right. So to recap, asteroid belt, hide behind asteroids, shoot them afar, wear exoskeletons and exosuits. Hey. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And then you might stand a chance. Or you might be teleported into a sun. Okay. Well, if it doesn't work and we can still escape, looks at Blanca, we have warp drive, don't we? I think so. Um, yep, we do. Fantastic. We can make uh, a... Uh, Ross pipes up. Is it still under warranty? <laughs> Russ thinks the warp drive. <laughs> Should Russ actually try to fix the warp drive? Wait, is our warp drive even damaged? No. No. I don't think it is. Not at the moment. Alright, Russ. I want you to get your exosuit on and God the warp drive. Uh. You will be facing a mentally superior opponent to you. <laughs> who can teleport your lungs out of your body. Rush is on ground. Nice. Alright, well, Fair is going to think her her uh, fiance for all the help and will call him as soon as this unicorn fiasco is over to let him know how it went. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. If you don't hear from me in three weeks, then start worrying. I want to call as soon as it's dead. I or if he's already worried. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. He actually starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't come out in five minutes, just wait longer. <laughs> no. So you guys head towards the location of the unicorn. We're gonna we're gonna go and scope it out, and if it's too much, we're gonna nope it out of there because we did we never said we would try to succeed. We only said oh, we would try. One time. I heard one time. Unicorns can follow you at light speed. Marina puts her suit on now, just in case. Same here. Ross is all geared up. Wait, I have an idea. While we're Wait. on our way there, while we're on our way there, does Marina have time to put on the bindi, do a check on the unicorn, and then take it off and heal up in time? Why would I want to do that? Marina's <laughs> just like mentally superior. My sparkly eyes. I'll teach you what mentally superior means. <laughs> because if we use the bindi, you would be all knowing of every little thing about the unicorn. We could have a chance to fight the unicorn. And then we could take it off of you and sell it for money. <laughs> <laughs> and Marina's just like... But, but I want to take a joyride in it. So you just spare it. You can yeah. use you just Marina. Wait. You can use the bindi and have your fun. But let's just let's just put it on for just a second right now to learn everything we can about the unicorns, Shh. and then take so, it off. So you can play with it during the fight. All right. All right. Also, no. you know, all right. I think it's on one. Head. Marina. What's the condition? Wait, real quick. Marina, Marina like talks. One of your bed pillows. Wait, what? You the condition is that you give Marina a pillow for her room. Like, another one. She'll collect them. I'd like to inform you all that you all have just one pillow. <laughs> yes, that's why it's a condition. Fair is just, like, take it, whatever. Alright, Marina, if that thing goes into your head, like that Bindi takes over your mind or whatever... I'm gonna throw all all your cosmetics in the toilet. <laughs> I swear to God, <laughs> you might as well kill yourself. Marina like... only looks. <laughs> she only looks slightly affronted by that. She's like, well, most of this is natural. <laughs> yeah, yeah keep telling yourself that. <laughs> Ignore uh, him, hon. Um, did Gee want to say something? 
Danny. Danny. Danny Bonaducci. Danny. I can't get these headsets to work. Nah. Mm. Well, we can hear you now. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm trying back and forth with this. Although I was trying to say a few things before, and I was talking, but um. We couldn't hear you. What does he want to say now? Now. There's nothing to say now because everything already passed. Well, any comment on having Marina put on the bindi for just a second to get a check on the unicorns? What? Once again, Buck? Is there anything he has to say about us agreeing to put have Marina try the bindi to learn about the unicorns? Try the what? The bindi. The bindi, the thing that we spent all last session getting. Oh, that. Yeah, do it. I guess. Wait, do we know the drawbacks? It does 3d6 of non-lethal damage no, that can't be... Non-metagame thinking. Do our characters know the drawbacks of the... Um, Sarah and Marina do. Um, in combat, taking it off in combat will stagger you for a round. I don't mean that. Oh. Sarah and Marina have both tried it on, therefore she her. gains the knowledge to know what it does. Yeah. Thank you. Danny means long term. Go. Oh. Danny, no, Danny means in character. Which characters know the drawbacks of this thing? It would be Farah and Marina because they have both put it on. Yeah. Okay. I thought of. I was thinking Danny was trying to say the long term effects. No, I'm yep. not thinking about that right now. But I only have one Jack, and um, I just wanted to make sure of that because Guy doesn't want hurt. Doesn't want his friends hurt. Special yeah. sense of mental damage. Farrah knows it's Farrah knows it's harmless enough for her to put it on for just a second to think about unicorns. Russ pipes okay. up. Uh, um, while, while you're doing that, is there any chance that you could hit it with your lore spell? Hit what with the lore spell? The unicorn. She would have to be able to see the unicorn. But with the bindi, she doesn't need to see the unicorn. And Lena dropped from the call. The heat of wherever she's living is melting her Wi-Fi. Uh, testing, testing. Hi. Yep. Hello. You hear me? Yep. Hello. We can hear okay. you. It's the wrong setting. Okay, in the meantime, Russ is going to put forth another suggestion. Okay. He's going to say, guys, guys, hear me out. Giant balloon spaceship. Elaborate. Well, the unicorn might be a mentally superior opponent, but we've gotten reports that it's also rather indiscriminate about what it teleports. So, yeah, so if you could, uh, present it with a fake threat and then hit it from behind while it's distracted, we might have a better chance of survival. All right, we need a scarecrow of some sort. Gee, can you put on a straw hat? <laughs> teleport, I mean... <laughs> No, I don't have a straw hat. Damn it. My plan won't work. <laughs> You're fucking <laughs> worthless, D. Here, here you go. Ferris is there going, or we can find a nearby depot and maybe make some dummies? I like you thinking, Ferris. Russ is just going to uh, recommend. Don't we is have some you know, painters that we could scrounge yep. up from our cargo bay? We could just weld them together. Wait, what do you want to do, Russ? We could just take some containers from our cargo bay and weld them together with some flashlights. You can't get weld with flashlights. No, 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 no. You don't. We're not welding with the flashlights. We're going to weld them together and put flashlights on the front to simulate, you know, ship headlights. I like this plan too, Gee, Why can't you think of good ideas like these two? Because he's not from. talking. <laughs> Gee. It's because Danny's oh. Skype is not working. I'm here. <laughs> it, it froze for a second. He like, actually... He, what? Why can't, can't you think of good ideas like these two? My microphone in my suit seems to be busted. I can't hear half of what you people are saying. I am sorry. I'll be sure to fix that. This is in character, by the way. <laughs> I'm so, actually... Uh, 
I'm actually yeah, trying to fix well. everything internally. <laughs> sure, when hell freaks is over. Let's go, crew. But um, <laughs> I was no, going go to ahead. make a remark. Go ahead. But I was trying to make sure things worked. <laughs> it's just more of an off comment. It's like, I wish I could just make, like, goo clones or something. You'll never make me happy. <laughs> I wish I could make goo clones. I That's heard all. you. We heard you. All right. So, Marina. Distractions. Marina. Yes, fine. Let's do the unicorn check. All right. You take 3d6 stamp. 14 this time. Your nose starts bleeding. But now she knows everything about a unicorn, so tell us. I shove tissues in her nose. Remember, don't lean your head back. All the blood needs to come out. <laughs> so. That's true, actually, Russ says. You have, Otherwise, it just drips down your sinuses and you start vomiting blood. Exactly. Okay. So, your lore brings you to... You're just sort of doing a brain blast sort of scenario where you relearn... Marina's brain directly interfaces with universal knowledge and pretty much Googles, tell me about unicorns. You real you learn that most unicorns are actually really fucking stupid and really fucking weak. But they're very social and and very, you know, keen to their surroundings. And uh, you know, they're Decently strong, you mean, like a horse. And, you know, they're a bit dexterous, so they're not very, uh, you know, they can dodge pretty easily. But they're also pretty frail. Like, every time a unicorn has been defeated, it's always been one shot. Usually. So we, so we only get one shot. Yeah. Unicorn... You only get one shot, but, uh... Wait, do unicorns hunt in packs? No. They're very... They're solitary creatures. Alright. First. One thing but the, the thing that makes them threatening is their vast power for teleporting things. Alright, quick question. Which one of us here is a virgin? <laughs> They'll often go after that person. Virgin, I'm out. Hand. <laughs> Russ... <laughs> would Marina yes would she be a virgin yes she has the V card Russ has the V card Farrah's given hers up a long time ago Gee, strangely no dare do it <laughs> Gee, strangely still still does does not have his V card <laughs> I'm joking Wait, what's the deal with Danny? I thought you were at the same place. No, he uh, went to his friend's house. Okay. I was talking about going to this friend's house for about a week now. Yeah. I'm sorry it ended up being today of all times, but... It's know, cool. I'm just doing lots of back and forth is all. Yeah. So, what, does Guy have his V card? A speed card? V, v card. Virgin card. Virgin? How would you know? Actually, yeah, that's a good point. Guy does have amnesia, so he wouldn't really know if he was a virgin or not. <laughs> I mean, for not the most... Not to mention, he's a mass of cells. Yeah, he How can... can a mass of cells be a virgin? He's oh, yeah, always he's reproducing. <laughs> what? He sexually reproduces every day. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, every second, if you think about it. I mean, he recovers, so... That's true. I need to go do food things. Do you want me to just leave my sheet with y'all and you can make any rolls? Um, leave it in the chat. Put it to the chat. Someone take over Lena. Yeah, I'll be back. I don't know. After foods. All right. I'm going to play Marina for funsies. You will operate her. So you can both lose your V-card to get... I'm kidding. Um... Okay, okay. So the first thing Marina does is mind crush Belonke. <laughs> <laughs> With the bindi on, and it does double damage. Oh, I'm dead. I guess 
embarrass him out of the game. Sorry, <laughs> Austin. It's horrible. Sorry, Austin. We never liked you anyway. I know. It was <laughs> inevitable. It was inevitable. You. It was. It was inedible. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm so lonely. <laughs> Just standing here all by my own. Just so lonely. I'm, I'm, I'm giving him a minute to do this. I could stop. No, continue. We, I love your singing. It's beautiful. You don't right. remember that scene? Wait, you don't remember that joke from? Uh, yeah, I know from Team America. Yeah, where it's just like it, it's all oh, irreparable. What, what, what did you say? I said irreparable. <laughs> irreparable. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. Why does everyone have to be so fucking stupid? <laughs> and that's what I say every time I DM. It's great. Anywho. Oh, yeah. So, your radar is picking up uh, where the unicorn could be. And All right, I'll have our exosuits on except Wade. <laughs> Wade has his exosuit on. Uh, he's just sort of, you know, trying to fix things before you contact the unicorn. He's actually trying to bolt a few things down. <laughs> okay. So, in the corner, you detect the unicorn all the way down here. And there's a horse-shaped blip. It's like a very fat sort of... Almost looks like a miniature pony. It's actually quite short for a horse. <laughs> at like maybe four four feet, five feet, including the horn. Aww. It's little Sebastian. It's, it's the little pony. <laughs> it's a little, little pony. You would have called. It's little Sebastian, guys. Okay, okay. So Russ is going to take this time to work on the uh, junky decoy ship. Um, how many boxes do you use? How many do we have? Um, well, you've used about uh maybe a month of food. So you have what really one box. And the rest so is filled one box with to do my thing with. Yep. Are there any other containers that I can scrounge up on the ship that we don't I need? mean you can empty them, but most of them are filled with like emergency flares and whatnot. There is your chest of holding, but it's really just a secret compartment and it's not really known for carrying, you know. It's not necessarily safe to put up you know, things like emergency flares into it. How about rations? Rations could be okay. It's, you know... Okay, so could I get about three crates if I empty uh, two of the ration containers into the chest of holding? Sure. I will allow it. And your chest of holding okay. is now half full. Alright, alright. So I have three crates on my hands. And Rob his hands in glee, and you can actually see small explosions as he does this. Pew! 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 Uh, he is going to attempt to weld them together. Uh, which is not something that he can actually do because he's not good with, you know, flammable things in his hands. You can't actually wield anything. Your hands are clumsy. Yeah. Do you want Which some... is why he's probably just going to ask um, Marina for some assistance and anyone else who's willing to help. I mean, Wade what could help. I, I will allow him, because I have a sheet pulled up, he could pull an engineering role for you. Okay. Engineering sounds good. All right. Uh, let me see his engineering. Uh, engineering... Wait. Awesome. Tom couldn't join us? Yeah. Nope. Sorry. Alright, so... Last time, fine. He has a plus seven. 
he manages to make a decent one. He's going to roll this three times for you. Okay. He makes a really good one. And? One that's kind of junky. But, you know, it's passable. <laughs> okay, okay. Russell's you don't You don't have enough flashlights. You do know that you have actually used up about, um... There's a flashlight for each one of you on the ship. So one, two, three, four. So you only have one flashlight. Wait, why only one? Because there's six of you. One flashlight per person. And the last one, it's like, Wade refuses to uh, use the other flashlight. It's like, we're going to run out of flashlights. We could need those. What if the ship loses power? Uh, Russ can see it. So, but that won't be much of an issue if we die to the unicorn. Yeah, still, these flashlights aren't really made to, you know, last extremely long in, you know, space. Well, from what I gather, our battle should be exceedingly short. I hope so. Uh, Russ thinks about that sentence. I don't like how I phrase that. Anyone else not like how I phrase that? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, You're wait, wait. So only one of them actually has a flashlight strapped to it? Um, no, all of them have two flashlights. Uh, two have two flashlights each, and one just has one flashlight. Mm. Russ thinks right. about it. That's well, why. If the unicorns are so dumb, then just one flashlight might do the job where two, well, where we thought two might be necessary. Most ship headlights do have two, and a unicorn is wise enough to know that, you know, hey, if there's two shining things at me, I should probably teleport it away. Hmm. Russell's going to consider this issue carefully. And then see if anyone has any, like, glow-in-the-dark rainbow stickers. Oh. No. Mm -hmm. Nope. None of you Not do. You do have flares. Or beacons. For, emer oh for emergency purposes. Though this means you use up one of them. Or two of uh, them, at least. Yeah. I believe you had five max. I'll be right back. Alright. I will look up how many beacons you have for this battle. For this. Hey, it's going to teleport into our ship. I mean, it might teleport you out of your ship. Okay. You have five emergency beacons. Alright, alright. So... I'm going to use up five flashlights and one emergency beacon making all these things, and I'm going to light the emergency beacon, like, as uh, as we're sending all these out the airlock. All right. You do this. Oh, oh, one last thing can we do. Can we give them a nifty paint job? Um, you don't really have paint? You do have food paste, and I guess there's some, like, you know, some mildew in the bathroom you could use. <laughs> it's not really, you know, good paint, but, you know. By the way, okay. these are constructed with duct tape. That's fine. Duct tape is the best thing. I'm back. All right, Russ. I gotta move too, so. Right. Yes. You object these out the airlock? Uh, if we have a good flight solution on them, yeah. All right. These poof out the airlock. And. Uh, can, one last thing before we get on with this. Can we make it so that we can trigger when the flashlights come on? Um. 
one of them, yes, the other two are going to be, you know, just you're going to have to just leave them on. Why one yes and two no's? Because your roles really weren't good enough. Okay, that's fair. And I, you know, I signified uh, the, you know, the boxes right here. They're bigger than normal, bo you know, ships, but, you know. I guess they could be the size of a, not even an emergency pod. Anywho. Well, unicorns are dumb, and they have lights strapped to them. They do glow in the dark. Well, how dumb did we say a unicorn is after, um... If you want to know game stats-wise, they have an intelligence of minus three. Okay. <laughs> Well, I was wondering because Marina put on the bindi to know everything about a unicorn. All right, if you want to know their stats, um, give me one second. Important question, Con. What's what? their will save? Their will. I'm gonna say uh, it's a plus ten, so you have to beat a twenty. Wait, is it a wait? Is a will save based on your intelligence, though? Wisdom. Okay, so they're wise but not smart. Yeah, here's their scores: plus two strength, plus two dex, zero con, minus three intelligence, five wisdom, five charisma. Okay. They're very sociable and extremely intimidating. <laughs> By the way, when you see the unicorn blipping on your radar, um, by the way, just pinging in the far right-hand corner, you see about one, two, three, four, five, six other sort of blipping things as well in the shape of, hu of uh, people. I'm going to assume they're dead. <laughs> Probably a safe assumption. Unicorns are very dangerous. There's also a uh, arm attached to his horn. An arm attached to what? Nothing. Actually, you wouldn't be able to see it. You're too far away. Okay, okay. So, um, now this is asking as Marina. I'm wondering what shenanigans I could get up to by using the Bindi with some of her spells. So, one of the things that I'm wondering about is if we could equip the Bendy and cast her blur spell on the entire ship. Ooh. Um. Alright. But that's going to take two turns. And that's going to be 6d6 six of damage. Well, let's see what her health is at the moment. 19. So that would probably knock her out. Probably. Do you want to risk it? Because then that would leave us one person short, but we wouldn't be fighting outside in space. We would be fighting in, uh, what's it called, with our ship. Again, okay. Sh okay. Hey. Lena can make Lena. a decision on this. What? Oh, God. Lena. It Here's the idea. You put on the bindi again and you learned about the unicorn. Mm -hmm. You know that they're not very smart, actually, and they're actually quite fragile. It's just that they have, you know, immense magical power that makes them very, very threatening. Yeah, I remember. Um, well, here's Russ's idea. Russ's idea is for you to put the bindi back on. And to cast Blur on the entire ship. But you will have to take 6d6 six of non-lethal damage. Which would probably knock you out. Have I had any time to heal up? No. You're at 19. Yep. Okay, secondary idea, and this is perhaps less stupid. Uh, put on the Bindi and mind crush the unicorn. Too far. And you uh, can't... 
Um, I believe she has a range of 30 feet. And even What's the range of the Bindi's mind control factor? 30 feet. <sighs> They're also creatures of extremely strong will. But the thing is, you um, said its will save was 10, and so we'd have to beat a 20? Yeah. If she was wearing the bindi, she rolls above 20 all the time. Yeah. But that means you would have to get close. And it has a wicked perception check. And you are actually quite far away from it. Uh, her mind crush spell has a range of 50 feet. Even still, you got. It would be able to but see you within a hundred. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you right now. It'll be able to see you within a hundred. Therefore, you know. Well, I mean, if we land a hit on it, there's nothing it can do. I mean, if you land a hit on it, you can kill it. What's our range with the uh, space ship? Their guns. The guns? I believe it was about. Um... Wait, do we have a warp drive? Yes, you do. Or, or at least like a turbo boost. Yeah, your escaping is probably going to be no problem. I mean, well, if what it... are the chances that we line up with it and turbo ram it with the ship? Um, it'll probably be able to sense you coming a mile away. They got okay. really good perception. Dumbest idea I've ever had ever, but hear me out. What would happen if Marina body swapped into somebody and then put on the bindi in that new body? Um, her intelligence... I mean, all her mental stats would carry over, but I guess she would be a stronger character. But, you know, once her original body dies, and, you know... Her, uh, you know, the person inside of her gets to make a will save to, you know, kick her out. <laughs> no, 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 I'm asking because of an incredibly retarded synergy that I might have just thought of. What? And that is, Marina body swaps with Russ, Russ puts on the bindi, and then Marina gets all the benefits of the bindi while Russ eats the consequences. <laughs> oh, you do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Russ will do anything for his friends. You just broke friends. the game. <laughs> it's I'm not just, fair, but it would work. I'm sorry, I'm sitting here thinking... We're trying to figure out... Wait, are we trying to figure out any way that we can... We're trying to figure out a way to cheat this so hard. Yes, that's what I was asking. All right, excellent, I'm in. All right. Oh, the cheese. So. So cheesy, it's cheddar. All right. So, by the way, your uh, boxes you shout out the... God, shout out. Um, The uh, airlock? Yeah. Um, They start... One just disappears. Just gone. Okay. Okay, okay. So the unicorn spotted that one, huh? Yep. Are you rolling for these? You know what? I'll roll it. Yes, please roll so it's not bu like a bullshit DM thing. It has to be uh, 20. I don't want to do a rock spawn and then you die bullshit. They got mighty perception. That's okay. Just one of those things where it's like, let's actually give us a chance here. Yeah. Okay, okay. So hear me out, guys. Russ is saying, if Marina swaps with me and then and puts on the bendy in my body, she might be able to give us some really serious spell support that I wouldn't be able to give you on my own. Farrah thinking, but then you... Major flaw, all... major flaw, major flaw. What? What's what? that? You would be able to do the mind control thing, which is all fine and dandy. But none of your spells are available to you while you're in Russ's body. That's fair. Oh, we should have swapped over for getting information on the unit. We already did that. Um, Belonke. What? 
Do serious. me a favor. That's why you're down to 19 health. Blanque, we are doing an opposed uh, roll thing here. Oh, jeez. Is he going to teleport me? Tell, roll your piloting. Uh, your pi piloting stuff against his uh, perception. Uh, what would that be? Oh, and give Wait, yourself we, a we plus. We drifted that close, or um, it's it's since the boxes, so it's just sort of a you know he's just scanning around. Give yourselves a plus uh five for uh the boxes and uh, the asteroids in front of you. All right, real quick, Con. Um, is that on my flexibility? Yeah, it's going to be your flexibility plus any piloting skill plus five. Oh, discipline, whatever. Yeah, discipline. Oh, let's see. All right. Oh, plus two. Roll it. All right, so 11. Hold on, let me just uh, pick something up. Do you want me to roll first? Or do you want to roll? You roll first. You have to beat 25. Fucking hell. It has spotted your ship. Shit. <laughs> um. Ugh, do you want Marina to... Marina. ...on the bendy, use blur, and be functionally useful for this apparently forced encounter that we cannot cheese out of. I mean, or we can just warp up, drive away. Roll. All right, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna roll a d6. Pick a number. I'm not doing it. I don't want. It's a million and a half, and we have a bindi. One, two, three, four. Austin's five. What'd what I roll? Russ! Roll me a will save. Uh oh. Is Russ gonna be teleported? <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> Alright, so roll me a will save. Roll me your God. 16. Not good enough. Welcome to the cold vacuum of space, guys. Um, you have your exosuit on, so you're. Oh. You're kind of good, but do I, do you are teleported are directly in front of the unicorn. Punch it in his bitch face. <laughs> Where's the unicorn on the map? Down, bottom left, right hand corner, the very bottom right hand corner. You see it has corpses all around it. <laughs> you also see that this unicorn might is actually, despite its dopey sort of appearance... It's actually well toned. It just has a sort of, it just has a stupid horse face. It's making like it kind of has the same horse face that you see in those horse masks. Stupid horse faces. Yes. I, now all I'm thinking of is the Adventure Time horse. Uh, James oh, Baxter. Like it's sticking his tongue out. That yeah. Way. Uh, we thought you were talking okay, about okay. James Baxter. No, not like James Baxter. He's helpless. He might not be, but he's going to act like it. Russ is going to pretend to be helpless? Yes. The unicorn will comfort you with its horse dick. <laughs> Welcome to horseporn.com. I'm um, speaking of horseporn.com. Russ. I'm not going to go that far, guys. Come on. Roll me initiative. Okay. And that is. Uh, your dex. Dexterity plus what? Um, dexterity, just your dex. What if... Fifteen. Oh, hey guys, check out Lena's idea. Alright, what if Russ distracts the unicorn and then gets the ship... We need the ship the... within range. Alright. Wait, Blast. Wait. Oh, my okay. cable again. You, you, we can hear you. Yes. This is 
No, unfortunately, uh, do we have comms in these suits? Um, you did not bring your walkie-talk. Um, actually, yeah, you would. I thought they were built into the suits. Yeah, they are. All right, Russ, we're coming to get you. I'm just determining how. What's the diameter of our laces? Hmm? Um, your guns. Um, let me actually measure it out. Because you can shoot within 300 feet. Oh yeah, you could uh, make a decent shot at a minus one penalty. Guys. Yes. All right, so my mic is off. Where's the airlocks? Back of the ship. Okay. Behind the med bay. Okay. I could shoot at this unicorn, but I could also vaporize Russ. There is a possibility. Uh, does the lore spell grant us the plus five bonus against it? Um, Lena would have to be in within range of the unicorn. The thing that I put in Skype, is that at all viable? Um. Um. Because you said that once body swap, uh, the uh, you can, don't gain um, any new magical powers from your new body. You're, you're restrained to what that body has. Yeah, I know. So Maria, I mean, it become a unicorn. Yes. Joyride. 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 You want to take over the unicorn? And have it defeat itself, yes. Alright. I've never seen a unicorn try to stab itself with its own horn. <laughs> it doesn't need to. It can teleport its own innards outside of its body. But where? Joke's on you. It teleported its innards inside of Russ. But now he has <laughs> unicorn organs. They actually give you a minus one constitution, Russ. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't okay, so in all Marina wouldn't we'll teleport him like that. And I'm gonna Are let we you. Still trying to cheese it. I'm gonna let you know right now. They got a pretty good uh, will save. It's plus ten. If you wear the bindi, it's a sure thing. Yeah, I could. Go. All right, you want to pull the ship close enough, or do you want to fire on uh, the unicorn? Would we have time for a second shot with the unicorn if we do this? Because, I mean, Russ technically gets his own turn now. Someone needs to shoot at the unicorn if you want. Someone's going to have to make it to... You guys get to go first this combat round. Are our crates in play? Your crates are still in play, but do you want to get closer and kill the unicorn? What What do you guys want to do? It's your turn. Just to let you know that if you're going to move in the ship, you're going to have to spend AP normally, okay? Are we still trying to cheese this thing? You can try. You, you, you still have three actions this round. Anyone else? Are we doing this or are we going to do it straight up? <coughs> Let's cheese it. Let's cheese the shit out of it. This is not a fight that we can win straight up. Or at least not one that we should try to win straight up. Hehe. <laughs> Alright. So. I mean, I mean, Pharaoh really can't say much. She's not a... She is just a log for the ride at this point because she can't really do much except for, you know, hit the fire button when she's told to. Diploma size with the unicorn. <laughs> Talk to the unicorn. <laughs> it tells you that it's actually the last of its kind. It's a sad and tragic tale. We don't care. Called Watership Down. But no, I'm sorry. When you Wrong the movie. Unicorn, all I can think of is that stupid robot chicken one. Oh, what a terrible thing it is to be the last unicorn. Oh my gosh, look at another unicorn like me. Impale. What a terrible fate to be the last unicorn. God. <laughs> All right. So, who wants to go first? Are there any other options besides Marina attempting to hijack it? Or shooting it, which I really don't feel very hopeful about? Um, 
Anyone you, else? You can run and leave Russ with the unicorn alone. But we can't say... We, I, Farrah will not leave someone behind. That is not her style. Anyone else have ideas? You're obviously thinking up of everything that Farrah would probably think up of. At this point. You going for it? So we can either try to shoot him and then use whatever's left to move in to do the marina thing. Someone's going to have to run to the guns. So marina uh, is uh, functionally go. plan B. I'm sorry, what? Um, I actually put some stuff into guns on Pharaoh with my level up. All right. Uh, Wait, she has a point. Con, con, con. I want to shoot at it. I would love to shoot at it, but how wide is the laser? Because I don't want to hit Russ, too. Oh, if you miss, Austin, you're probably going to hit Russ. Maybe. I'd have you re-roll. Alright. Um. Though, you have to pilot the ship in order to move it closer. Alright, I'm gonna turn the ship then. Because we can just move it and shoot so it's closer and has a lesser chance of hitting Russ. Alright, I'm moving closer. Oh, shit, wrong roll. So just then, if with that, that's just add 10 to that, Connor. Is that your piloting? Yeah, just add 10. Alright, you do move closer. So you're gonna have to move and you there. are able to line up a shot that won't hit Russ? I mean, if you miss, you're going to hit Russ, but now now you don't have a minus one penalty. <clears throat> really? It doesn't just random fire in a dice roll direction? I mean, I was going to give you a penalty because you were shooting really far away. Through asteroids? So, you know, I could have been meaner. Fire, or do I have to jump myself? Someone has, it has to be someone manning the guns, right? Yep. Yeah. So then it's me. Alright, fair and enough. And I have to roll my gun, right? Yep. You gotta run there first, though. Alright, I have enough AP for that. I have enough AP to run over and then shoot. Hopefully. Plus guns, is my range. It's a plus three. Wish me luck, guys. Body shot. Damn it! Farah. I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Guys, you can kill Farah later. <laughs> okay, so what's going on? <laughs> I like how Numbers is being so calm about this, and we're all just sitting there going, fuck. You I just saw it? What's happening. So, you may... You may... I may have not been vaporized by your member. But here's the thing. Doesn't Russ also have to roll to, like, dodge or... Farah, roll me another d20. Hold on a minute. I'm actually in the middle of making lunch. If, dinner. If I kill Russ, I am going to be very, very sad. No, no, no. It's fine. Roll me another d20. Just Seven. don't roll well. Roll uh, low. Low. Fifteen. Good news. I didn't kill Russ? Yes, because nothing comes out of the guns. They're broken. At least it's just one of at least it's just one of the guns. You just go click 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 click. She's just like, uh guys, I think this one's busted. Try pulling the knob. Yes. Let me show it. Um Turns out, uh, your guns have, uh, another thing that might have been teleported out of your ship. Oh, well then. Um, is the, uh, you know, the thing that connects the power to your guns. Oh, fantastic. So, you know. Russ, you're gonna have to fight it head on. <laughs> 
so you guys know, I moved Guy closer to the back. But I'm guessing since it's now in um, combat, he's only moved 20 feet. Yeah. Um, Marina. I mean, do you want Russ to go first, or do you want to try to take over the unicorn body? If this is a thing that we're... Yeah, if this is a thing we're actually going to do, Russ might want to distract it a little bit. Russ. How did Barrett get to the gun so quickly? Um, because she nat one, and I thought it'd be funny. Oh wait, action points. I forgot about that. Yeah, you have you have many action points. Three. Sorry, so You have three. So you can move a little bit more. Oh, yeah, Isn't there like a so dash thing or something Ross or am I crazy? A distraction. He can. You can do this. I'll be back. Russ, what are you gonna do to the unicorn? Well see the thing is, Russ has a special power. He has kinetic launch. <laughs> You're going to kinetic launch at this unicorn. Yes. This is the dumbest idea. Alright, that's two AP right there, Russ. Okay. You so can let's see what my it's doohickey a... is. No, that's Marina Sheet. Sorry. <laughs> launch. Da -da -da. Total of seven. All right. Nineteen. Is that your attack roll against the unicorn? No, this is just to launch myself. All right. That's good enough for me. Okay. You and spinning now I'm and going to make you with the punching. All right. Go for a punch. Thirty-two. That's actually a hit. <laughs> Russ has been working out. Work out. <laughs> okay, so that's... Uh -huh, 46 plus... 1d6 plus 6. There's a lot of 6s. 30 damage! Alright. It's got a dr of 4. So, minus 26. Alright. You've actually landed a great punch to this unicorn. Yes. You know what's amazing? <laughs> Russ can now actually boast that he's punched a unicorn in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> if I live. It whinnies. So, Russ, this is what happened your turn. You're spinning in space, and you just sort of launch yourself forward towards this thing. And Superman punch it, you know, doing the Superman fly sort of deal. Mm -hmm. And you just fly and just punch it right in the note in the snaz. Right in the snaz. If you could hear, and there's no noise because this is you know fucking space, you uh, would hear a whinny of pain. <laughs> in space, no one can hear you whinny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that was a thing. I need to roll a fortitude save. Because, you know, last. Yep. Okay, so that's plus five. So if okay. you guys hear weird it's things, you have to for me. You didn't take Marina, any? It's hella distracted! Yes, alright, um... Who's close enough to Marina to help her with the bindi because it's probably going to like uh, make her half faint at this point. He is the healer. Ge oh no, how about Wade? Wade's right there. Not yeah, Wade. Wade will do it. Okay. Yeah, so the moment it succeeds or fails, depend, it's just as soon as they see some change, take it off, right? As soon as her tongue starts hanging out of her mouth. Alright. <laughs> Yes, mind control. With the Bindi, we are making this happen. Yeah, hey, uh, sorry, he's just trying to get to the airlock, because out of anyone, he's probably the best bet at trying to save Russ at the moment. Alright. 
Then you because unlike like everyone else, he's a very undefined mass, so, you know. <laughs> I mean, I you... I was really trying to make this more of a surprise thing, but considering the situation we're in. Um, well, Marina, you took 11 damage. Alright, and do you want to tell me what I have to beat, or do you want me to just roll it? You have to beat a, uh... Twenty. I believe twenty. And with the bendy, you get an extra plus ten. Yep. Yep. Here we go. Don't fuck up. No. Oh shit! What? <laughs> Marina, you go unconscious. What? <laughs> of all the times that that could be the right moment, that was. The right moment for an 20. Yes. yes. The unicorn is under your control. <laughs> no, she's out for the count. Remember the robot spider? Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, this is a young unicorn. Marina, never let go of the spell. Uh, you are a unicorn now. <laughs> you are a unicorn. What do you do? Russ, you cannot tell. The unicorn, yeah, can't speak or anything, right? No. Okay, okay. Um, Marina attempts to, like, have the unicorn, unicorn lower its head and get into a kneeling position as, as if to say, Russ, would you like to take a magical unicorn ride? <laughs> Russ falters at this. And then he sees it, and yes, he would like to take magical unicorn ride. <laughs> 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 Hold on, I need to look up the last unicorn song. But we can't play it copyright. Shit. And it's hot with laughter. And you know what we need now? Unicorn. Connor, we need a picture oh, of Russ you, riding I want to be with you. To make believe yes. with you. Yes. In how many, how many times? In how many ways want to be with you. To make believe with you. Connor? Yes. I now request a picture of Russ riding the rainbow unicorn attack unicorn. <laughs> All right. So here's the deal. I will try. I will too, but not right yeah. now. This is the best. Marina. 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 All right. Um, um, it's Marina Corn now. Marina Corn. <laughs> yes. All right. Here's the deal. Press safe passage back towards the ship. All right. So you're just galloping towards the ship. Yes. Galloping on stardust and rainbows. All right. You have to roll. Enthusiastically waving. Here's the thing. I was going to have to make you roll twice to keep the will of this unicorn in check. But then. Oh, wait, Marina. I will be right oh, back. Oh, no. What do you want? I just realized your uh, body. What? Uh, wait. What is, man, I'm wondering how safe it is for you to go back to your normal body right now. I'm in the timeout corner with Wade. I know, <laughs> you take another 3d6 damage. No, shouldn't Wade have taken the bindi off? Um. That's why I got her right next to him, just like, alright, you're gonna take this off of me as soon as I do the thing. Alright. So, here's the deal. Take the bindi off. He just sort of like nudges it with like his finger. So sort of, All right, roll me your now. Now that you have the bindi off though, I was going to have to make you roll twice, but since you net 20, you have an extended period with this unicorn. Good. I was only going to need one or two turns max anyways. 
Galloping back, I want you to make one more roll to try to control its will. This time, without your plus ten. Okay. Still pretty good odds. Oh! Why do I keep getting the extremes of the rolls today? I know. Okay. Halfway back. Just sort of as a mental image, like you're in its brain and the unicorn just comes out right behind you. And, uh... Wait, the, the unicorn didn't have to counter-roll. This is just me rolling again against its flat. Yeah, against its flat will. Here's what happens. You're, like, taking a magical joy ride in this unicorn's brain as an, act an, as an astral projection of some sort. And its astral projection just sort of comes out behind you and impales your astral proje projection right in the astral projection. No, no one's going to laugh at that? Okay, I'm cool. <laughs> Numbers appreciates my joke with a sensible chuckle. But the real question is, how screwed is everyone? Um, well, it's its turn. Uh, roll me an... Alright, actually, you know what? Roll me initiative again. Uh, should anyone... Faster than Russ roll, and Belonke. Actually, Russ has a dexterity of uh, four. Russ, you are rolling against this thing because you are in its immediate area. As okay. soon as I can find you on the map. 21. All right. Well, you get to go first. This thing sort of, you know takes control of its mind as you're on its back and it gives you a mean look. I mean, it, it looks derpy as hell, but, you know, if it could give you a mean face, it would. Punch it in the brain! Okay. Boosh, rip off I its want horn. This to happen. I am riding on the unicorn's back. Can I swing both of my arms around and clap its head so that it explodes? Please. If you succeed two attack rolls, yes. I'm bad. And next level, you're going to learn a new power. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, Con, um, is there any uh, specific thing that I can do um, to increase my chances of hitting? Not really. No special rules? You're going to try and wail on this unicorn still? No, I'm not going to I'm not going to give you that. Okay, okay. So, plus 16, guys. Faithful question. Do I get the lore bonus? No, that's too much. No. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 wait. Um, wouldn't this count as a power? Okay. And I get three attacks, because I got three AP. 18, 34, and 26. Well, the 34 and the 26 hit. <laughs> You, you're just sort of okay. trying to punch it. It dodges. But then you clap your hands together. Roll damage. Oh, jeez, this is beautiful. <laughs> I like to think when he's fighting with his fists, he's like that super... He's like that gentleman meme that has his hands up in fisticuffs. The right. unicorn tries to buck you off, but you clap its head. Its horn shoots out. <laughs> and, no, and flies right into your ship. Wait, wait, wait. Who sees it? Blanque, Sarah, or Wade? Um, oh, man. We gotta collect that as a souvenir, man. It, yes. It actually punctures be, your hull. Be useful. Be useful to get that horn. It punctures your hull right here. Closest. I'm going to spend my AP to run over while grabbing a sheet from the room that's in because I can actually get there. And I'm going to try and like. Get over the hole. Russ, you <laughs> killed the unicorn. I am just going to like take out the horn and cover it with something so that the vacuum of space doesn't destroy the ship. <laughs> you put it Russ at. Still riding the dead corpse of the unicorn. 
<laughs> it's it's not even a unicorn anymore. It's just a horse. But Marina kind of like Marina goes over to the cockpit and says, Blanque, you need to take pictures of this. <laughs> Already am and done. <laughs> I'll load it to the quest not spacewalk. So that we that our team has just clocked a unicorn dead. <laughs> like we have all the pictures of Russ going towards the unicorn and killing the unicorn and then writing it back. I imagine the space internet meme. Of clapping a unicorn's brains out while riding it. <laughs> Do you bring the corpse aboard? I yeah. imagine we should. Okay, well, I just threw a metal sheet over the hole, over the hole where the horn was, and Farrah now has a unicorn horn. And I mean, like, you could use a Dixie cup. Cool. I'm going to be fair with you. You could use just a Dixie cup or something like that, <laughs> like a pan. <laughs> You actually have uh, multiple hole fra fractures that you have fixed that way. <laughs> We're doing that. Wait, wait, what about this being filled by a fucking trash can right now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did we all just forget the uh, trash can sitting in the middle of the living room right now? <laughs> Since we're done with combat, Farrah can actually just move however much she wants. She's going to head over to the cockpit and just be like, so! We now have proof raving, waving the unicorn horn. <laughs> Make it into a I wand. I love it. Russ, we're gonna eat tonight. <laughs> Russ is just looking down at the corpse. I don't know if that's safe. Is eating unicorn meat safe? I'm, I'm, I was gonna let you guys know that you would have had to roll like a 25 in order to hit this thing. <laughs> Russ, you... You are now the most useful member of the party. <laughs> of all those I times missing, all of my points into strength and brawling. <laughs> all right. well, we haven't had too many diplomacy things except for the singing eardrum. So, you guys could have easily all died. But we didn't. Easily. And instead, Russ clapped the unicorn's brains out. <laughs> and Marina got to take a very short joy ride. <laughs> <laughs> Marina, you are currently trying to heal uh, Russ and Marina right now, because that's all I could do at the moment. Now, before we go do anything else, Pharaoh would like to ask Blanky if she may use the communication systems. The cell phone, telephone. <laughs> the, it's the telephone. Bus ride in the dead unicorn. <laughs> Farrah's going to call her fiance. Cause she knows he's worried. Are you sure this isn't an Adult Swim promo of just like <laughs> someone riding a dead unicorn? Like what we need to do is Russ needs to bring the corpse aboard, and everyone needs to pile around and take a selfie with it. It it has pink <laughs> yes. fur with a purple of a lilac tail. Perfect. I'm sorry. We all take a selfie with this thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Becca. Because of the dead unicorn, I'm thinking of that moment in Star versus the Force of Evil where, like, just go back to your play dimension and take your dead unicorn with you. Wait, <laughs> I'm dead? You didn't tell me I was dead. <laughs> uh. Anyways. So, yes, after taking a selfie with the dead unicorn, Farrah calls her fiancé. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> She's sitting there waving the unicorn horn in her hands. How the fuck? What? <laughs> <laughs> you are gone for ten minutes! You suck. <laughs> oh. Farrah's going to go, I want to introduce you to my team. <laughs> Wait, how long is that horn? <laughs> oh my god, you guys are so lucky. Yeah, it's just like we have this wonderful man named Russ that just kind of like points back through the hallway where apparently I can, I assume you can see Russ through the hallway at the end. He's very far away. Very far away, but still. Russ, say hi. Do you hear a face? Hello. He clapped the unicorn to death. 
<laughs> Here, hold on. And she sends pictures. <laughs> Gee is helping Russ carry the unicorn back, by the way. <laughs> Gee, do you want to heal the unicorn? How the fuck can I heal the unicorn? It's dead. Its brain, its head is crushed. I, uh, you know. I mean, he can solder the wound so it doesn't bleed everywhere, but... <laughs> uh, it's just sort of joking around. Anyone want to roll uh, medicine so that we can get some starship fuel? That's yeah. true. Wait, I want to roll a knowledge check. Actually, I want to. I want to see. I want to do a thing involving. Um, what can we do with this thing's body? All right. Well, Marina could actually just tell you. I... Marina you put on the bindi and knows then. everything. All right, Marina, because she knows pretty much everything about unicorns. By the way, you don't know everything about everything. You just have to pick a thing, and then you know it while you're wearing the bindi. I know. It's like a Google search. Yeah. So right now it's unicorns. Right now it's unicorns. You know that they, despite being so dangerous, they're actually an endangered species due to their, and one of the reasons why they're so aggressive, is because they're starship fuel. At least they're dung anyway. <laughs> It's dead, so, you know. Right, well, you could make glue. Still... Go back out and... Russ, uh, I need no. you to go back out into space. I need you to collect that dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's us There's afraid. usually a refining process to it. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's like dark matter from Futurama. You just plug it in. <laughs> <laughs> around. What are, you, what are you talking about? Oh, by the way, uh, he gives you a tiny pooper scooper. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have rainbows on it? <laughs> um, it looks like a pooper scooper for a cat. You didn't answer my question. Does it have rainbows on it? The unicorn or the pooper scooper? <laughs> Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um. Yes. Russ accepts this duty with a solemn salute and goes out to Rainbow Pooper Scooper up some rainbow poop. Uh, he is going to help him. Right. Well. I wonder if the we can. Um. Because it's like finding sand in you know the vastness of space. You actually find this task quite difficult. Roll me a perception check, both of you. <laughs> well, they're doing yeah. that. I'm imagining... This, yeah, this would be Nicola sensory, right? Yeah. All right. Back to Nicola and uh, Farah. So let's just send her the, uh, sent Nicola the pictures of... 17. A, um, Russ destroying this unicorn. I'll be right back. Um... Nikola is just sort of dumbfounded. At the same time, he's like, wait, how long is that horn? It just Farrah kind of looks at it for a second. How long would it be? One foot. It's about a foot. <sighs> you got lucky. Why? That was only a baby. Oh. The well, adults usually have about a horn up to about three feet. Raise it a little bit again. Well, I mean, it's still really fucking impressive. Awesome. That is hugely impressive. They just, well, the danger, the, yep, we saved the solar system. Uh, this one at least. They were evacuating it. <laughs> yeah, well, they were evacuating it. Now they don't have to. <laughs> we should probably call and report to them that we did this. God damn it, Lena. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. It's a rainbow dirt. <laughs> it's the rainbow... No, it's the rainbow dung from Neopets. Yes, you got it. <laughs> it's the rainbow dung from Neopets. <laughs> so, 
uh, I love you, Lita. Very <laughs> me. You're already taken. No, no. I still should no. have my <laughs> Danny's okay with it. <laughs> oh, Danny. Threesome, really? No, no. He's just in the closet wearing a Superman shirt. <laughs> Watching, you know, right. like normal Rick couples. And Morty, right? Yeah, Rick and Morty jokes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyways, yes, Vera is contacting via texting kind of thing instead while still talking to Nicola, telling them that the unicorn problem is dealt with and the solar system can like repopulate again. They don't have to evacuate anymore. They're all good. Uh, y- you. We're so lucky. I still need one season. <laughs> it just. Fair. Honestly, I'm all excited right now. All right. Well, this thing is rather sturdy. It's staring like she's still like like looking it over. Wait, babe. I might need to call you back. <laughs> okay. So, bye, so, honey. <laughs> there's something on the radar. What is that? All right. I'll I'll call you back. I'll call you back. <laughs> He hangs and, up. And now Farrah's and now Farrah's gonna be slightly worried on that about that little blip, but all right. He before you pull, to father. Okay, before you pull over that, we rolled a while, long time ago, Connor. Okay. A one and a seventeen. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now. Despite you know how stand out out this is, how much this shit stands out literally. Yeah. Um. You know that scene from Spaceballs, where they're combing the desert. <laughs> shit. You ain't found shit, literally. <laughs> then I guess we'll, we'll head back. You... I must now petition that this cargo ship has a giant comb so we can comb space. <laughs> You can purchase that in your potential upgrades. Yay! <laughs> it's a solid ten bucks. Because <laughs> it's wholly it's novel- useless. It's a novelty item. <laughs> it actually weighs down your ship. Alright, so... Baseball's merchandise comb. <laughs> um, do you contact your employer... Yes. We get the shadowy figure and just Farrah's holding up the horn again. It's like, we did it! Amazing. Okay, meet me at these coordinates at the... Give me a name of a station. Mm. Space Pass. <laughs> Kiss! 99.5. <laughs> Space Pass. That's all I got. Spaceway. I'm going to make it Kiss Station. <laughs> Sorry, Danny. It's not going to be a gas station. The Kiss Station is actually like a mini mall. It's it's more of like it's kind of like Quest Night Headquarters, except more touristy. There's a lot more apartment complex there. No, what I was saying was more punny than anything. Okay. Okay. I know. Anywho. So the Kiss Station is like one of those weird, like more residential branches of Quest Knot. Uh-huh. Right? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, it's more residential, more touristy and shop like it's like a Mall of America mixed with uh It's like the Florida Mall. Yeah. It's got a hotel attached to it. But it's yeah. not a hotel, it's apartments. If anything, it's like the Orlando airport, except bigger. Okay, that works. Only, like, the people in this Skype call are going to get that. There's a hotel in the Orlando airport. Yep. It's a Hyatt. It's fancy. (laughs) Anyways. Anywho. So we go there. Uh, uh, You go there. And, uh, they say that they're going to meet you at your ship. Or, actually, no, no, no. Better yet, they're going to meet you at a disclosed location. Okay. A little red flag going up. 
sort of a sort of back alley sort of area. So you dock your ship there. You head out towards that location. And we are keeping the bindi hidden. And uh, Marina, on your way back, uh, you recover your damage through a nice, you know, power nap of eight hours. <laughs> all your beauty sleep. All your beauty, all, all of it. Unless the damage was caused by something else, then. That was all Bindi. Yep. So, you manage, man, you meet at this little cafe. There's these so, sort of big suits behind her, but, well, I'm getting out of myself. You see a, uh, a nuss woman with white hair <laughs> wearing sort of a white suit-like robe. What the numbers put down? <laughs> Fucking hate you numbers. <laughs> Look how baby Daisy's just staring like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's terrifying. Okay. The woman. Oh, it's the picture. In the picture. So this is who. So this is who wants it. This has been your benefactor. Blanke. What is she? She she actually yells out to Blanke. Is she a nuss? A nuss, yes. Where is she? What? Where is she? She, uh, I didn't really... It's sort of like a cafe. I sort don't of... see the cafe. I didn't like... make a map, okay? Uh, okay, so the we're map. in the cafe. You're in a cafe. I'm just gonna go to... I'm just gonna zoom in in black. There we go. For story Wait. purposes. Cutscene moment. Where is she on the map? I'm not putting her on the fucking on the map. map. I'm not putting it on the fucking map. No, this was the link okay, to this, this meeting. For this meeting, I, for this meeting, uh, I have a uh, very uh, solemn uh, request. Let me look through. Yes, numbers? What would that be? Um, Can I arrive at this meeting wearing the unicorn horn? As what? <laughs> As a horn. It's on his forehead. God, please. <laughs> All right, as a horn, people are terrified of you, and and just and just sort of go like, "Oh my god, really?" I'm just imagining a completely solemn man walking down the middle of a, of a mega mart wearing a unicorn horn, and people are running in fear. People are running in fear, <laughs> and people are jealous. Russ, you are immediately swarmed by people. <laughs> Russ is going to calmly keep walking and make sure that nobody steals his horn. You are surrounded, people asking you questions like, Where the hell did you get that? Oh my god, it's so cool! Can I touch it? Oh, and there's like women hitting on him. It's like, what are you doing later? <laughs> Big, strong, and handsome. Just like swooning over him. These people are going fucking nuts. <laughs> You actually are lo too separated from your group to continue with them. <laughs> You're gonna have to get I them like to move. To you may just have to uh, do a strength park check. myself outside the store and just solemnly stare in. <laughs> <laughs> strength, or you could just strength check to a um, move your way through the crowd to get into the cafe. Close and lock the door behind you. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, Nana's wearing like, sort oh, of the... Nada. Nada, how are you? You actually have not met Nada. She's like, uh, well, 
Blanque, you actually don't know who this woman is. Oh. is like, is this a friend of yours? Oh, I'm sorry. We haven't met face to face. Hi, I'm Nada. She is. Hi, Nada. So I'm your benefactor. You have the uh, object, right? Yeah, Maria, give me the object. Yep. I got it. Marina hands it over. She she looks at it. Apparently gives you an enhancement to whatever psychic powers you have. What the hell is psychic? No, I'm kidding. Um, she looks she looks at it. Ooh. Oh, wow. It's prettier than I remember. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Ferris going, Ferris going to stop her real quick and go, wait, remember? Don't worry about it. Oh, wow, it's pretty. Okay. How old are these things? Diplomatize and answer out of her. I was going to diplomatize and answer out of her. Oh, wow. Connor. Connor, can I try to diplomatize and answer out of her? Sure, go ahead, roll for it. That's my social? Yep. Don't you have any skills in diplomacy? No, I just have high social. Okay. I have my singing, but that's different. Yeah, I'll put something, I'll get his power into that eventually. I rolled an 11. All right. She isn't really well, she just sort of blows you off right there. Sorry. Shifty eyes, she does not trust this woman anymore, even if her eyes are pretty. She she is too distract. She's actually too ex- distracted looking at the pretty Bindi to actually even notice. <laughs> it's not even a disrespect thing. It's just more of she's just fa- so fascinated. Um, excuse me. Are you gonna pay me my money or what? Oh, of of course. Oh my god, I almost forgot it. Okay. Uh, can you hand him the his uh? Can you hand him the bag? Yeah, no problem, miss. And he just sort of had this, you just see this big, uh, big, uh, Gollum guy. Not Gollum, uh, one of the, the Kama, the rock people, this big rock dude. Okay. This big I rock got, dude. I got a, I have stomach problems. Be right back. Uh. Okay. Well, in the meantime... Bear is going to ask Nada, does this also include the bonus for the unicorn? Oh, of course, of course. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, by the way, mm-hmm. yes. um, Nicola mentioned to you, and I'm being way too nice to you guys. You are. You know what? No, go on, please, because... We haven't played in so long. There's a lot of stuff we may have forgotten from previous sessions. No, because I said it this session. The weird little blip on his radar? No. He said it to you when you first encountered the unicorn and mentioned something about your payment. Oh, right. Roll me knowledge to see if you actually remember. That is just a plain old knowledge? Yep. Mm. Hey, uh, Marina. Uh no, nope, she there. was not there. She was not there. Marina's not at the cafe? No, you're at the cafe. You just wouldn't remember. She wouldn't remember what Nicola said. Well, what about Blanque? He was there. His intelligence is probably higher than Farah's, which is a flat zero. Yeah, but Blanque doesn't listen to people. <laughs> and he was not here because... All right, flat 20. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, no, I don't remember. Something about payment, eh? Hey, uh... How about maybe getting... Are we keeping the horn, or are we gonna sell the horn? Um, there is a very... I mean, Russ is very popular right now. (laughs) Is... Wait, did Russ manage to weasel his way in? No. Uh, No, he would have to start hitting people. Or pushing people, which for Rush is Russ is very you know. Rude. It's a very delicate situation. 
I don't want to hit people if I can possibly avoid it. So I'm just being a uh, professional who's standing there guarding his unicorn horn and hopefully his wallet. His unicorn. Russ, by the time the crowd dissolves, you're completely naked. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, you can't roll for that. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I mean, (laughs) what can you roll for that? Sensory? (laughs) Hey, wait a minute. Marina knows all about unicorns now. That means she would know what the basic price for a unicorn bounty would be. All right. It would be like a mixture of of sensory flexibility and endurance. Or maybe a little bit of social. (laughs) Basically, you need to roll for everything to get out of a crowd like that. Just average out all of your stats and roll. <laughs> <laughs> or just make multiple rolls for everything, and if any one of them fails, then... <laughs> Lena! Lena, you know about all about unicorns. You would know the basic price for a good bounty. Uh, yes, Marina would. Do you want to confront your benefactor about the price? She paid you for the uni- for getting rid of the unicorn? Uh, How much what- is it? Yeah, it's like, what was her offer, and is she lowballing us? She was giving you a flat million. Which is... is No, it was a million. Okay, so it's one million. But, the actual price for a unicorn, which Lena would probably know, would be about for the horn? Or about the whole thing. The whole well, thing? yeah, we do technically have the body. You do not have an intact head. No. We, but have, we have a majority of a body. Which makes for very bad uh, taxidermy, I'm not gonna lie. We have the body and we have the horn, but the head is kind of crushed. Yeah. So, with that in mind, how much? It also, would... I thought this was just for the bounty rather than the body. It would be. For the bounty and everything, the Astrosian Empire actually even pays more. Usually about five mil. Okay. Marina turns and asks, do you think we can collect double on this? I mean, like, not collect double from Nada, but, like, collect from two different sources. Um... The Astrosian Empire is very hard to contact... For the most part, it's a lot of middlemen. Well, Brandy, you know everything about now. It's like, <laughs> I'd like to turn in this bounty. Well, you have to talk to this guy, and then he has to talk to his manager, and then he and has then, to talk to his regional manager, then his uh, solar system manager, then his galact, and then his uh, semi-regional manager, then, then back to this guy. Dog. <laughs> and then that guy's dog, and then has right, to. Number five. And then you have to go back to a council member. He has to perform a ritual for three minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this is this is out of character, but here's an idea, and it's a stupid one, but here you go. Um, what if we asked her a favor? Uh, waive the fee and just put on the bindi and tell us the most direct way to get an official bounty for killing the unicorn. You want Nada to put on the bindi? Yeah, just ask her to put on the bindi and tell us that information instead of giving us payment. Um, does someone want to ask her that? Farrah, diplomatize um, it. Make her do it. Oh, Farrah could just say, I know that you've been wa- that you're going to give us a million for it. Yeah? But... After kind of consulting with a friend of ours who knows everything about unicorns, that's a bit of a low ball. Is there maybe any way that, well, now that the bindi's going to be in your possession, if you could tell us the most direct way to get an official bounty? Oh. As we still have the body and the horn. You, oh, I, you must have misheard, misheard me. I said a million apiece. Did I not say that? I just heard a million, but sitting there thinking, a million apiece, that's Guy, Blanque, Sarah. It's six mil. Yeah, no, that's... that's, It should be in your account right now. Yeah, that's... 
Chip? Paradise. Oh, right. Well then. No, I was just imagining, Becca, with the way you responded, <laughs> it, it, it was just, it, everyone is just dead silent. It's like, okay then. <laughs> um, hey. Farah, you pull open yes. your phone, and if you go to check your banking information, there's a, we now see. there's a cold million in there already. It's just fair. It's just like, oh, well then. All right then. We're, I'm good. I, I would pay you more, but I'm using the rest, of the rest of the money to pay for relief efforts for what the unicorn destroyed. That's understandable. Can I ask what you're going to do with the bindi? Oh, you see, I'm a collector. I like really old artifacts and whatnot, so, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, keep it in a museum. Or in my gallery, at least. I think a museum might be too public for something with this powerful. Yeah, you got that right. Do we have to roll anything to see how genuine she's being here? Uh, surface good. level? Super genuine. Just a really nice person. The fact that you said surface level concerns me. Exactly. But if you want to look deeper, uh, be I my guest. Sleep during a conversation, not a. What's the deal? Wait, hold on a minute. We're in the middle of something. You said surface level, so if it was something else, what would I need to do? Roll sense motive. Social skill. Roll me a social Sorry. skill or a sensory. Take your I pick. I think you said. Eh. Yeah, the fact that you said social level, surface level is what worries me, so. A 19. Do I just be... She's still super genuine. Fair is just... Okay. Fair enough. There's no going around it. Also, lunch. My treat. Oh, yeah. Fair looks down to herself and just... Well, if you insist. <laughs> Marina's already, like, plastered to the cafe's pastry window. <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine Russ in the background, uh, just completely deadpan, completely serious, and he pipes up from a long great distance in a loud, booming voice. Can I get a Sunday? Um, <laughs> Russ, you managed to make it into the cafe with people plastered to the glass walls. Your clothes are ripped. <laughs> Your shirt is on is missing a few like your suit jacket is missing buttons as and your uh you know and your undershirt is teared open. So as far as we know, I go, up to Russ. I go up to Russ and tell him, you know what they say about a guy with a big horn? They have big hands. You know what they say about a guy with big hands? It's hard to put push buttons. <laughs> Russ nods seriously at this. It is indeed. Also, I would like a coffee. Decaf, please. Blanque Jeez, seems like a Kahlua okay. guy. Wait, what? Uh, it's coffee and uh, alcohol mixed in. Oh, no, no, no. Once I get the coffee, I pour, <laughs> like, I pull out a flask under my jacket and pour it in. Okay. So she treats you all the lunch, and she's like, uh, oh, and by the way, you all have a million apiece for taking care of the unicorn. Um. Mildly stunned into silence. Um. Oh, what did I. Yeah. All right. Yeah, when uh, Nada told Farrah that and she checked, she was just like, oh, well, okay then. And I'm going to assume by her picture that you linked that she's a nuss. Yeah, she is. She has sort of a white, it's not really a robe, it's more of like, sort of like a white sort of suit jacket sort of going into a long skirt. Okay. That sort of reaches past her feet, almost like a dress. Okay. Is she short? Um, she's around, uh, Marina's height, maybe five foot four, maybe five, five. Okay. She's shor shorter than you. She's not physically intimidating. She might 
have some magic on her, but really, that's up. She has no reason to use it right now. She does have a big old bodyguard behind her. That, uh... You know, who's pretty big. And... Pretty intimidating. Hey, Marina, you want this coffee? <laughs> Does Marina drink? <laughs> no, Marina looks up from her triple-decker cookie brownie and goes, No thanks, too bitter. Do it yourself. <laughs> Pour some more alcohol in it. Hey, if... So, if oh yes. On, if lunch is on her... I'm just going to warn you now that Farrah is a big eater. Why do you think she got that big in the first place? She, she is paying you a million dollars. Willy nilly. She, she throws... Clear out this restaurant. Farrah is just like, I don't eat that much, thank you, as she has like a small Don't you want to look good for the wedding? Hold on a minute, guys. God, she's just gonna eat yourself, and she won't look good in a what, and she won't fit into a wedding dress. God. Never, some people. This is an RP point in our campaign. <laughs> she can't. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> she can't fit in her fucking wedding dress. Roll too far for exercise. Roll for <laughs> exercise. It's gonna be a series of fortitude saves to make sure she stays on her diet. And a lot of will saves, too. Fair. We need to talk about your weight problems. It's not a body positive thing. We just want you to fit in your wedding dress. She's actually... Can you extract the fat? She's actually morbidly obese by the end of this campaign. <laughs> it's, like, disgustingly, like... Fair, we need you in battle. You see her roll up in, like, a scooter... <laughs> you know if she's that big she's probably like 10 times better at her drop games thing yeah if she could lift herself in the air <laughs> I think that might be hindered well I mean yeah she can get big but that doesn't mean she has to let herself go strength wise I that mean, would be awesome that's the joke though I'm just saying I can't wait till Farrah just rides in a scooter <laughs> Um, see her kill somebody just by body slamming them. By no, roll. No, her scoot. She flies up in the air, but her scooter falls and kills the guy under her. No, um, actually, thought, thought, like I seriously have a thought right now. Yeah. Um, Guy didn't get anything, by the way, but he just sort of like processes something and perks up. Uh, how did Nada and uh, Belanke meet? Um, Belanke got a random email. Oh. He's never actually met Nada. No, no, I got that much, but I figured, like, well, more Jeez. like, how did Nada get his contact, if anything? Or if it was just, like, a well, spam or something. Look, Danny, Danny, it's not a problem. I'm going to forget you said that. Anyway, Connor, that was a genuine thought process that he had, because as far as I remember, Belanke doesn't explain much. If anything, it sounded like a random hobo came up to him. Oh, I have my ways. I'm very connected. I mean, who well, do you think... not too connected. I mean, who do you think owns this, uh, place? Oh, shit. You know what? I'm gonna abuse those free crescent rolls. What? I want those crescent rolls now. The space croissants. Space croissants. Wait, what is Ferris saying? Ferris having a bunch of pastries. Um, mountain of pastries. Um, I'm just gonna say right now, I'm gonna love the total party wipe that's caused by Ferris rolling over. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you're negotiate so fat when she takes off up the entire hall she takes up the whole hall oh shit 
Your Maybe. fart so fat that she caused the total party wipe when she fell. So I'm going to have a follow-up question then. How did you get in contact with Belanke? Because uh, as far as I understood, we're all new. Honestly, I've been tracking the artifacts for a while. And, you know, if someone, you know, happens across the artifact, then I have my sources, okay? Just because I'm little doesn't mean I'm not powerful. That's not what I was implying. I was just curious if any... Look, Donkey okay, didn't explain much. You're already losing brownie points with me by talking to our boss. I can't wait for Belonke to say, Don't shit on hospitality! I won't allow it! <laughs> no, he, um, when Belonke piped up about that, he's just going to give him a very cold stare. And that'll be it. Is there any kind of stare that he can really do? His, his, uh, cameras. Oh. Uh, that's right. And then just turns back to Nada with a small smile on his, uh, screen. He's still not happy about Suzanne. Oh. Oh, yeah, he doesn't like Belanke. That's right. Uh, he's been okay with Belanke, but he's not happy about the Suzanne thing. And the way that phrase came out did not rest well with him. <laughs> All right. So, she's like, oh, I almost completely forgot. I was about to hand you the money. And she gives you a suitcase. And, uh, plops it on the table. Opens it up. And... A realistic version of $10 million appears. <laughs> so, money just exploding out of the, uh, out of the uh, suitcase... No, well, it's actually, uh... in town is staring through the window, by the way. <laughs> Russ, I feel I like need I need to, to kill the out. spectator. Wait, hold on. We need to do this privately. Russ, kill the spectators. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't, don't, don't. Russ looks annoyed at this. <laughs> She's... She basically hands you... Opens the case up. And the stack of uh, bucks that you see, like the paper money at least, is about uh, six inches tall. Alright, I will take this down to my nearest dealership. <laughs> and thank you, we will soon find more artifacts with you. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Come on guys, let's go. Sarah's going to ask one more, one quick question though. Uh, the ads about um, the ads about everyone publicly with this though with these artifacts. Now that we've proved that we're actually doing this and can go out and get them, and at the same time defeat a unicorn. Are they still going to be public ads for everybody? Oh yeah, I'm I'm collecting. I'm gonna. I want my art. I need the artifacts. So you know. Anyway, Relying I can, on six schmucks wouldn't be very. Yeah, um, if I smart. if I relied on all of you, I probably be, wouldn't be running the business I'm running right now. I thought uh, you were just collecting them. What? Repeat. She just said she wouldn't be running the business she would right now. So Farah's response was, "Wait a minute, I thought you were just collecting them." I'm collecting them, yes, but if I relied. There are collection things yet, yeah, really. Uh, it's not even the character who's being foul right now. It's just me going like, wait, what are you trying to say? She's saying, wait a minute, you wanted to collect these, but then how are you running a business off of the collection? Are you selling your collection? Are you renting no. out collection? Are you, like, that it's, is what Sarah is asking. It's like, wait a minute, I thought you wanted it for look, a collection. If I relied it on all six of you... By yourselves. It's a big galaxy. I don't expect you to find all of them. In fact, before you even got here, two others, a, a few others already found uh, two artifacts for me. Wait, aren't there only 13? Yeah, I have four. 
Thanks what to are you the all. other ones? That's seven right now. Yeah, there's only seven left, I believe. Yeah, seven. So you already had four. Two others came in. No, wait, it'd be nine. It'd be boxing. nine. She has four. There's 13 artifacts. Oh, she has four, including us. Yeah, including you, she has four. Oh, okay. The phrasing threw me off for a second there. Uh, so, uh, so part of that was Gee talking. <laughs> yeah. That's oddly fast. These are the legendary artifacts. <laughs> well, when you, you know, ask for a lot of help, things get to get done quicker. Mm-hmm. And a waitress comes by Belonke to give you more uh, coffee. Mm-hmm. She trips. Is she a suicide bomber? No. <laughs> she trips with this scolding hot beverage. You know, I was going to do the boobs and the face gag, but. No. No. Mm-hmm. I guess not. This scalding hot beverage fly this all over uh, Nana's Nana's face and body, just scolding her. Wait, who just got coffee all over? Nana just has a spray of hot coffee all hey, over hey, her. Not Sarah's fault. He, he immediately jumps up and prepares to to help her. She's scolding, dripping wet. Right, her skin skin is actually steaming. Nada just sort of looks uncomfortable. Yeah. Don't worry, I, I can. Sh- and all the-, the waitress is like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry! <laughs> and in tow, D is immediately going, Oh, don't worry, I can fix this! <laughs> Not it's like... Mm, it's okay. It's okay. A little assistance from you. Gee, was it? Yes. A little assistance would be fine. Thank you. But you're fine, dear. Continue working. Uh... He's a little perturbed by how calmly she's handling this, but then proceeds to, you know, open the casket to give, to heal her with the goop. It is surface level, so the goop should help. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. That, oh. You are just a miracle. Thank you. No, no problem. <laughs> this happens all the time back at the church. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I'm really glad I met you guys. I wish I could give you more, but, you know, I gotta do the relief fund. There's a lot of stuff I gotta do. No, 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 it's perfectly fine. Honestly, I was okay with the million as a whole, then everyone else started talking, but, yeah. Honestly, I was just, never mind. He just started trailing off and is mumbling to himself. (laughs) Well, all right. Let's go shopping, guy. Well, how much do we have right now after paying the rent for the ship and then paying for repairs and paying for gas? Oh, paying for, you know, fuel and more supplies? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is something we're going to do off mic. Okay. So we don't... Are we done then? Yeah. So you guys get back to your ship and, uh... Plot twist, we only end up with about a hundred bucks by the end of this. <laughs> we can buy a box of groceries. <laughs> Not a bag, a box. A box. <laughs> yes. It has everything you need. Bags are expensive. There hasn't been a bag ever since the bag box wars of the ninety seven. <laughs> Many so, people died. <laughs> what are you guys laughing about? Many people died. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, Nana um, gives you a message giving you a hint 
for where the next artifact might be. Okay. And that will be next time. Fantastic. Well, right. well, let's say our goodbyes. Alrighty. Bye. All right. Who are you people again? I'm Octocow. You can find me on Sketchatorium at Tumblr.com. This is Becca. You can find me on Neon149 on DeviantArt. Yay. Danny? I am Danny. I'm also Leo. I'm on the DeviantArt as Great Leo, DeviantArt, etc. Um, I don't really have anything on my YouTube. Don't worry about that. And I may add in something called Sketchfab later. But that will be another time. La, 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 la. Numbers. Mm, no. I have the DeviantArt accounts at one one three four two zero at DeviantArt. Nice. Uh, la la la, Lena. Uh, I'm Lena, and I'm most active on Squeak Squeak Butt Touch on Tumblr. And I still love it. Now is that two T's or three? <laughs> I think it's three. And this is Bush. Bush is on the Facebook as Bush the Awesome, and on DeviantArt at Bush the Awesome. B O O S H, the letter D, and then the word Awesome. And he is also same thing on Tumblr. Why am I doing terrible accent? I do not know. But and I believe that is all. Oh, and you know, you'll probably find this on YouTube. You guys should subscribe, I guess. I don't know. Also, Wade would be here, but he doesn't exist. It's true. Tom finally, you know, came clean. And, you know, for him to not exist, he actually wiped himself from existence. <laughs> don't worry, he'll probably be back next time. He'll be back. They always come back. Well, to be continued. See you guys later. Bye. 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 Stop farting, Austin. God damn it.